Have you ever looked up online what Spotify pays for a stream? If so, you probably came across many different websites claiming that the big green giant pays out around $0.003 to $0.005 per stream. But why do these numbers vary so much? The numbers themselves might sound small, but they quickly add up. Especially when your track gets popular, having a higher payout per stream definitely makes a difference. So what's the deal? At the same time, we see many artists accusing Spotify of not paying enough to the musicians who actually bring their fans to the platform. But the issue is much more complex. To understand all of this, we need to dive deep into the structure of the music business. And you may be surprised to learn that despite its launch in 2006 and steady subscriber growth, Spotify only turned a profit last year. Some of you may remember Napster, the music sharing platform that began its rise to fame in the early days of the internet. Before Napster, CDs and physical media were the common method to listen to music. But that changed very quickly. While Napster was free and easy to use, the music labels, and especially the big three, Warner, Sony and Universal, did not like what they saw, as they could not make any money from their own music. Obviously, there was a huge gap between the end user and the music providers. People didn't want to pay $10 for an entire album when all they wanted was single tracks. So Napster just gave them what they wanted. While Napster was the fastest growing community on the internet at the time, the service was obviously illegal and was shut down after only two years. Now the industry had to adapt to the developments and the gap left by Napster. So there was a big tech giant that took the concept and turned it into a profitable and sustainable online music store. After Soundjam MP was bought by Apple, iTunes entered the market. Still, CDs and physical media were the best-selling medium at the time. But as we all know, that all changed with the introduction of the iPhone and the global rise of smartphones. Now technology made it easier than ever to consume music through the internet. This milestone changed the business forever and ushered in the streaming era of music. Within a year of the iPhone's launch, Daniel Ek had the idea to create a platform that would satisfy the demand for an inexpensive way to consume all the music in the world in a quick and easy way. So he founded Spotify and made licensing deals with the three major labels that owned most of the world's music catalog. Having all that music catalog available on the service was a key factor in making Spotify a huge success. Imagine not having artists like Drake, Billie Eilish or Taylor Swift on the platform. For further context, I should mention that we live in very different times than when Napster or iTunes were a thing, obviously. But two things, making music is easier and cheaper than ever, so there are a lot more artists who need to get a piece of the pie. And second, people are not willing to pay as much to consume music. These two factors are the gasoline for the music payout discussion. But to understand how the payout per stream is calculated and why it varies so much, we first need to look at the payout model called Pro Rata that Spotify actually uses. The Pro Rata model works like this. Each month, all revenue generated by all subscribers on Spotify is aggregated and each rights holder gets a share of that revenue based on the number of streams they generated that month. To give you some numbers here, every month, 70% of the total revenue goes to the music rights owners. First of all, all the amount of money you get per stream can be different for every artist and every track. Let me explain why. Because there are tons of factors that affect the numbers. The first factor is, of course, did someone listen to your song for at least 30 seconds? Because only then does it count as a stream and generate revenue. Then there's the type of stream. Is it coming from a premium, family or free account? Each of those has its own value for streams. Then there's something called discovery mode. You can turn this on for your release to increase the algorithmic playout by Spotify. Spotify will then get an additional share of the generated revenue. You should also note that which country the stream comes from is also important. The cost of a monthly subscription to Spotify varies from country to country, which is reflected in the payout per stream. And finally, if there are other parties involved like distributors without a direct deal with Spotify, 
labels, third-party services or other rights holders, they also get a share of the generated revenue. At this point, starting your own label with us for free and having everything at your fingertips would be more financially rewarding. Just for your information. And as a side fact, due to Spotify's new artificial streaming rules, if 90% of your streams are fake, you won't get paid. Instead, your distributor will be asked by Spotify for a compensation payment, in addition to a takedown of your music. So if a marketing service guarantees you streams, immediately close to website. To sum it up, declaring Spotify to be the big evil villain is absolutely not fair. The problem is much more complex and has to do with the overall evolution of the music market and consumer expectations. With so much new music being released every week, it is indeed hard to compensate everyone at the level it used to be. In addition, Spotify has to cover its costs to maintain its platform and eventually become profitable. Factors like account type, country, type of stream and not having a distro with direct deals are the reason why the final payout is different and individual for every track on Spotify. I really hope this has clarified some things and you now have a better understanding of the whole situation. And if you need a trusted partner to distribute your music and take care of your label who has a direct deal with Spotify, feel free to contact us. Just take a look at the description, where you will also find our social media. There you will see me talking about many helpful tips, tricks and strategies around the music business. So stay safe and keep making good music.